What's going on, guys? Zuko back with another War Within video. Hope you are all having a wonderful day. We are going to look at Preservation Evoker. And I'm laughing because this is, again, not something I really thought I was going to be looking at. Um, I played, like, every healer in the game. And I understand a lot about sort of how all the healers work. But Preservation was something I could just never get my head wrapped around. I don't know why. It was just, like, really difficult for me to understand how to play this thing properly and um i'm still not amazing at it but i feel like i've kind of got a baseline education now of what i need to do um with this spec and it feels comfortable now i was trying it in a bunch of different uh keys in the beta so we're going to talk about flame shaper in particular i will do a video on chrono warden don't worry we're gonna look at flame shaper preservation evoker today and kind of what this new hero talent tree is going to give you and then how it looks in a dungeon we're going to go through all that Let's look at Flame Shaper itself. What does it actually do for you? Well, it gives you Engulf. This is a new ability. So it does either damage or healing if you target an enemy or an ally. It does quite a bit of damage or healing on its own. But for each periodic effect on the enemy, the damage and healing goes up by 50%. Now, that's pretty cool considering what you can do with Preservation Evoker, which is that you can echo a lot of your healing spells, right? So... You can echo a dream breath. You could echo a reversion. You could temporal anomaly a whole group and then press reversion on the tank. And then you could echo a dream breath on the tank and have four dots on four hots on them. And then you could smack them with an engulf and it would be like, boom, like it would do a crazy amount of healing. Okay. So this is kind of what you're going to end up doing. And I think for preservation evoker, I feel like this really helps to solve Maybe one of the small weaknesses with Preservation Evoker, which is single target, like, bombs. Like a really big, like a healing surge from a Resto Shaman, right? Or a huge um, buffed up Holy Light from a Holy Paladin. Like, they don't really have a single target bomb spell. Like, I think Living Flame is about as close as you get. And it's not bad. Living Flame is a good heal. But... It's it's not always as big as some of those other healers can produce, but engulf really is that ability. It is that ability. Like you can smack somebody for a two a two million two and a half million engulf, like a serenity from a holy priest, right? So that's kind of what it's going to give you. And again, you buff it by adding hots to your allies. And what's cool about this tree is it actually gives you some more hots. So all of your essence abilities now deal 20% of the healing or damage done as fire over eight seconds. So if you heal yourself with an essence ability, like your Emerald Blossom, or of course your Echo, if I just Echo myself, it gives me this Enkindle, right? And then I can do a reversion. And now I have an Enkindle dot and two reversion dots. And then when I hit myself with an engulf, now I have three hots on myself. Sorry, not dots, hots. My engulf just did 1.7 million healing right there. I don't know if you saw my portrait, but oh my god, get off. So that's kind of what you're looking at now. You've got this really cool extra hot that you can add on top of a dream breath hot or a reversion hot, um, which is awesome. That's going to buff the power of engulf and buff the power of what you're doing with this entire tree, uh, which is very, very cool. Okay. So the other really important thing that I want to talk about for this tree is consume flame. And this is like going to be so cool in a raid scenario. I haven't been able to test it in a raid, but like, oh my God, this is just going to be disgusting. Engulf consumes four seconds of dream breath, detonating it and healing all nearby allies equal to 300% of the amount consumed. So the idea here is that you can dream breath your group and then you engulf somebody and it will go boom and it will heal everybody and we're going to show you what that looks like right here let's go heal a bunch of people down there. there's a bunch of people down here testing let's go check it out what i realized really quickly on was that you can actually temporal anomaly your engulf yes you could temporal anomaly and do a double dream breath and then engulf and it would consume a bunch of healing on the one person and then spread that but you can actually temporal anomaly an engulf and if you have the talent resonating sphere it'll put echoes on everybody and then your engulf will echo to five people and then it will consume dream breath on five people and do a really huge explosion it's crazy so watch this we're gonna dream breath into a temporal anomaly okay and then we're gonna watch this engulf here boom 
See what that just did? Boom! I just did two of them. Like, the amount of healing you're going to be able to produce from this in a raid scenario is just disgusting. Like, I cannot stress enough how crazy that's going to be. What's happening there is that the different... I have, I have dream breaths on a lot of people. Five of those people are going to get hit with engulf, okay? And that engulf is going to consume dream breath on each of those five people and detonate it and heal everybody five times for the 300% amount that I just consumed. You see how that is? How that goes? So in a raid, it's going to be like, oh my God, it's going to be crazy. But even in Mythic Plus, I was trying this in a key and it worked out really, really well and ended up like doing tons of healing for my group. So I really love the combo of what's going on here. Put out a bunch of hots on your allies and then engulf somebody and they will get crazy amounts of healing based on the number of hots that are on them. Or if you do this temporal anomaly um into engulf thing while you already have dream breath out it'll do healing on everybody and it'll be a lot of healing so let's look at the vod i will show you kind of how this goes this is the um opening pack here i get a temporal anomaly out uh <laughs> again i'm very new to this so you gotta bear with me here but that was an engulf right there uh... so I have a double dream breath on myself. This is an engulf with just two dream breaths. I hit myself with an engulf here. And I hit myself for like 900k, I think. I think it hits even harder, actually. But it basically brings me back to full. And then I hit a rewind here into a Emerald Communion. Like, my God. The... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> I was doing like a million HPS. Like, I, I don't even understand. Uh, uh, um, preservation of ogre is just holy crap, man. I have been nothing but impressed with this. This is so disgusting. I'm actually like crying in holy paladin right now because of how insane, how much healing and damage you can produce actually as a preservation of ogre. Now, it is important to remember that engulf can be used offensively or defensively and i think this is really important to understand because um almost all the healers are actually getting a hero tree that supports them either offensively or defensively with engulf or flame shaper preservation evoker you need to think hard about what's going on in front of you oh my is my tank like dying do i need to engulf my tank put a bunch of hots on him and engulf him to keep him alive is everybody doing fine right now or do i need to use my engulf oh, no. defensively versus offensively i can use it offensively but then i won't have it up for the the moment where i need to use it defensively so there's a choice you need to make and i think that's really good actually that's good design this is the kind of design you want with healers in my opinion where you have to actually use um your abilities potentially offensively or defensively and if you make the wrong choice you could be in big trouble that's a good good design decision from blizzard and a lot of the healers have that kind of stuff coming into the war with him, which is great. Look at my engulf, though. I hit him for 1.6 million. I crit somebody for 1.6 million on my engulf. Like, it just hits really hard. And again, I think it helps to shore up that potential weakness for Preservation Evoker, where you're looking... You, you really do need that single target bomb that you're looking at to just keep somebody alive. Now, in terms of offensive dots, as I've been saying, offensive, defensive, you can put a... Uh, fire breath on enemies and then your essence spending abilities will also put a dot so you can either put you can do fire breath and then you can disintegrate an enemy and that disintegrate will put it out so you can have two dots on an enemy which will buff the damage of your engulf by a hundred percent it'll double the damage of your engulf which again is fantastic that's really really good so I didn't really understand this very well when I was doing this dungeon, but this is the kind of stuff you can start thinking about. Again, you get two charges of engulf. That's what the hero tree also does for you. It gives you an extra charge. So you could use one offensively, one defensively. It really, the choice is up to you, but there's my temporal anomaly. Yeah, there's my temporal anomaly. So I did a dream breath here. I have double dream breath on people. Then I temporal anomaly into an engulf. I think I sent my engulf a little bit early. I didn't have echoes on everybody yet. So that was actually a mistake. But you can see we're doing 500k HPS here um, easily. Like without, not that I'm not trying, but it's just not that hard on this spec to get up to those numbers. It's just so strong. 
here's a good example of where you can do damage and i didn't even really understand if i had used engulf offensively on this fight i would have done even more damage but even without doing that um i was able to do quite a bit of damage now we do have an augvoker in the group so when it comes to my personal damage here yes it's being buffed by an augvoker so just remember that but on malloc you do get a double damage uh phase here so any living flame damage like look at my living flame 1.3 million living flame my disintegrates doing a bunch of ticking damage i get another living flame here watch this 1.8 million living flame like holy cow man 1. 1 million <laughs> i'm doing 360 thousand dps right now as a healer uh, on basically a single target fight so Yes, again, that's buffed by an Augvoker, but let's subtract, I don't know, 70k. I'd still be doing like 280k HP or DPS. That's really strong. So uh, here's the overall numbers on that boss fight. There's the Enkindle dot. That's how much Enkindle is contributing. So when I'm disintegrating one target, it puts a dot on them. That's 10% of my damage there. Like, it's a lot, actually. It ends up being a lot of damage. You can see. Um, actually, no, you can't. You can't account for the intellect buff. But anyway, I didn't even use Enkindle offensively. I could have been doing like... 400k dps it could have been even better right so yeah i've been really impressed with what this tree is able to do and even with my very limited knowledge of how preservation evoker works i'm able to pump a lot of damage and a lot of healing and there's these moments where you can just like i just enkindled somebody right there i think right i get my my breath on people and then i hit zix here with an enkindle watch this he's at about half health boom he goes right up to full health there like that's what the enkindle or the that's what the um uh engulfs are doing for you very sorry i said enkindle there but again we're up to 500k hps i just think it works really well for what you're trying to do i'm not even really optimizing my dots but look at that's how much the consume flamed him remember consume flame is me that's the capstone for flame shaper where i'm consuming dream breath and i'm um and i'm getting a bunch of healing on everybody from that consumption which is really crazy so that's what my engulf did. My engulf healing itself was good, but the friggin' consumption was even better. It's like, it did 1.3 million. Just the consumption of the dream breath itself did 1.3 million uh, healing there on somebody. Like, it's just, it's just ridiculous how strong that combo is. So get your hots out, and then temporal anomaly, and then engulf. And I swear to God, you'll full heal everybody. It'll just be the craziest engulf ever because it's going to hit five people with the engulf and then it's going to consume all the healing and it's just going to be amazing. So, yeah, I think um, Preservation Evoker is looking really good. We're going to skip the rest of this section here because it's basically just more of the same. And then Mist Caller keeps lagging out on everybody. So we do end up killing her, but the Mist Caller fight is really weird right now. This final section of the dungeon, again, I do enjoy showing this off. I know I've shown a lot of mists, but I just, I keep doing mists for you guys because it is the most um, consistent dungeon that we can get footage of, basically. And um, the damage and the, um, and the healing requirements are actually really good. So one thing I do want to stress on these worms, they must be crowd controlled. These worms just cast two acid bombs on Zix here, and this is essentially unhealable. Like, watch how quick he dies here. Boom, boom. Look at how, look at how, see how fast that was? Um, that's something where you need to be watching these guys and what they're casting and crowd controlling them. So the big guy needs to be kicked, of course, but the little guys are casting volatile acid. That's what this is. And it ends up just one-shotting Zick. So I probably could have helped him, actually. I could have done, like, um, not rewind, but my the single target rewind, where you basically st make somebody have, like, a stagger bar. I forget what it's called right now, but you know what it's called, I'm sure. That could have been really helpful there, but I just didn't know what I was doing again. And there's these moments where I need to be a little bit. Look how much healing happened there. Look at Temporal Anomaly. Boom. 500k HPS once again. Like, it's not hard to do this much healing on Preservation Evoker. It just, it just happens, man. It's crazy. I just, uh, I'm just blown away constantly by how good this is. Yeah, it's just been really fun. I'm not even, again, I'm not playing very well. I, I got to keep working at it. But uh, for you guys who know how to play Preservation Evoker really well, I promise you, um, you're going to get an additional tool in Engulf. It's going to be really strong to help single target heal people or do mass AoE healing with the Dream Breath consumption. But you can also use it for damage. And I'm sure you guys will understand when you're able to open up that damage. And see, Zix got double bombed again. He's going to die here. I'm sure you guys will be able to understand when to open up that engulf window 
and do a crazy amount of uh, DPS with it. I, I think it's um, actually going to be insane. I didn't even think about the, the way that this works, actually. You can consume four seconds. Okay, it only actually consumes Dream Breath, so you can't use this to do damage. But um, you can, of course... Uh, using golf to consume your your two hots that you can put on an enemy from your disintegrate and from fire breath and then uh, you'll do way more damage that way so let's skip to the final boss here we'll get to tradova and i'll show you what this ends up looking like the big struggle that remains for preservation evoker the last sort of big struggle that you're always going to have is of course your range restriction you only have 30 yards of range and that really kind of rears its ugly head when you're fighting bosses like Tradova, where you have to dodge this consumption stuff. And you can see I'm out of range of Zix and I'm out of range of my Warlock. So I have to constantly be repositioning. This is where your Verdant Embrace, I think, repositioning is very, very good. And um, it's going to help you a lot to find those allies that need to be found. <laughs> but the bottom line is you are going to struggle with range problems on particular boss fights um, in the War Within. You're just gonna have to wait and see. That, to me, is the ultimate skill check for a Preservation Evoker, or just an Evoker in general, but especially as a Healing Evoker, as a Preservation Evoker, range is so important. You need to be close to your allies. So, to me, this is what you're really gonna have to work on the most. If you're thinking of playing Preservation Evoker, the big skill check you're gonna have to worry about is keeping in range of your allies with that 30 yard distance and making sure to optimize your verdant embraces to reposition yourself in a way that gets you close to the whole group because if you don't do that um people are just going to start dying and you're not going to be able to save them uh so again i just think that's really important here's mind link once again i have to run away from my allies you can see how annoying this fight can end up being um, yeah, and then like hitting a good dream breath. I think you're gonna want to have to turn on your um, Raid frames to see people's health bars or whatever add-on you're using if you're using LVUI or whatever It probably has a better UI for this where you can see everybody's health bar So you can actually see positionally where your allies are at all times So you can dash to them or whatever again This is a really annoying part of the fight where you're linked together and you need to run away Repositioning with verdant embrace and there you go. That's kind of what it ends up looking like um, we almost died there. I have an Emerald Communion thing going on. It's not really happening. It's just a bug. That's how it looks, guys. I think the overall HPS got bugged and the overall DPS kind of got bugged, but I hope that gives you a really good sense for what it looks like. Um, we can try to look at some of the numbers here, but I think that at this point, I've actually done a bunch of other keys. Um, <clears throat> let's look at... Uh, Yes, I was using a different... Oh, no, this was the same build. That was on a different one, though. There's Tradova, Living Flame Reversion. Yeah, this is me playing a different build. So I'm sorry about the overall numbers. You're not going to be able to see them because I was playing a bunch of different builds. But I hope that gives you a, a sense for what it looks like. I promise you this uh, tree is really fun to play. Lots of offense or defense. You get to choose whatever you want to do. It gives you a brand new single target tool that can just truck somebody if you have like four hots on them. Or if you do the Dream Breath into the Temporal Anomaly into the Engulf, you can do mass AoE healing with it as well. The choice is yours. You really have everything you want with this tree and um, I'm really excited about it. So I think Preservation Invoker is looking amazing in the War Within. I'm prom I promise you it's like it felt a lot better than some of the other healers especially like Mistweaver Monk and Holy Paladin. It actually just felt way better than those um, in terms of its throughput. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. I would love to hear what you guys think especially you guys who play Preservation Invoker like full time. Please let me know what you think about that. Thank you so much again for watching. I love you all. I'll see you in the next one.